here we have some data that some fake data that was collected um, I made some of this data up just to show you examples of what we're about to learn which is these Excel functions these Excel functions are basic functions that you're going to need to use in probably our um, SAC work, our very first SAC, but also they're basic functions that you should know um, for Excel. Anytime you're using Excel, you'll you always have a need for these functions. Here we have some graphs or some information that we've processed. We processed this data and turned it into information here. So we can summarize or can we, we can see that money spent on food per day is about $160. The average and the max and the min are pretty low. Apple versus Samsung. I think this is wrong, actually. I'll just fix this. This is supposed to be around the other way. And this is supposed to be Samsung. There you go, that's better. So apparently, based on this data that was collected, Apple is the winner. Computing class, this was people who thought computing class was awesome was 40%, people who thought it was absolute garbage, 7%, and so on. And time spent gaming, we can see that there's most of the people are spending all of the time, all of the time they have spare gaming, which might be an issue, depending on what I want to use this information for. Okay, let's get started. So you will have this blank um, template to work with. The first thing we're going to use or um, learn how to use is these uh, one, two, three, four, five functions here. The sum, average, max, mean, and count. We, we're going to use these for the money spent here. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out what the total for all of the students who have submitted their um, their how much they spend on food per day? I want to see how much it is. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say equals sum. Select the range. Push enter. That gives me the total, as if I were to say twenty plus two dollars fifty plus one plus five plus ten plus ten. You could do that manually. So here you could go equals this cell plus this cell plus this cell plus this cell. Um, but if you've got a lot of cells to add, then using the sum function is much quicker. So sum and then you select the range of cells that you want to add together. Next is the average. Average works very similar to the sum function. So equals average, select the range of cells, it finds the average or calculates the average from the range of cells that I selected. So again, we could do that manually, which would be adding every cell and then dividing it by how many cells there are, or we could just use the average function that's readily available. The max and the min are also very similar. Max, select the range, minimum, select the range again we can see manually by checking 1 is the minimum here entered and 30 is the maximum but if we had rows and rows and rows and rows of data here that would be much harder to see and you'd be more prone to, to um, human error so these functions eliminate that the last one is going to be count so we want to see how many respondents we've had here. Now again, we can clearly see this by the number of rows here. So there's actually 16 rows here. So that means that's 15 people that have, have um, answered this survey um, because we don't count the first one. That's the title of the, the column. But if we had, again, rows and rows and rows of stuff and stuff in the middle that broke up those rows and there was, it'd just be, it'd be harder. So we can just, Select, well, start the formula, count, and then select the range that we want to count, push enter, and it gives us 15. Now, how do we graph that? That's easy, we highlight it. We don't want to um, actually graph the count, 
we want to just graph that stuff. We'll put it into a bar, a histo, so it's easy to. These are good for. What are they good for? What was this again? This was the money spent on food per day with 15 students. These are good for comparisons. So we can see now this, if we just looked at that, would mean nothing. Our eyes wouldn't, wouldn't, it wouldn't give us anything that we could make a decision on or it wouldn't be good enough, it wouldn't be information. But we've processed this data now over here. This is the processing part. Process this data and then turn it into information using this graph, infographic, or bar, column, histogram, chart. Next, let's go to this function, count if. Where we're going to use that is, let's get rid of this for a second, is going to be here. I want to count and graph how many times Samsung versus Apple comes up. So we're going to have two categories, Apple, Samsung. How can I do this? I can go in and count them manually. One, two, three, four. No, too long. So we're going to go count if open bracket the range of cells that I want to count. The criteria is going to be Apple. I think it's capital. It's case sensitive. So make sure that the spelling is exactly what you want to count. Then enter. There is nine. Same for Samsung. I can copy this formula down but you'll see what happens. When I copy or drag cells down to copy the formula, the range gets moved one cell down or whichever way I move, copy the formula. So I might copy the formula to the right, that means the range will move to the right as well. If I move and copy the formula down using that little box in the bottom right, then it's gonna move down a cell as well. So this range has to be moved using the hand icon, moving it back up one. We'll learn how to keep that static um, in the next example when we do a VLOOKUP table. This also needs to be changed from Apple to Samsung because we're in the Samsung category. Now we can easily graph this. We've processed this data over here and we can see a percentage of from the 15 people that were surveyed, what their preferences were. So, Apple versus Samsung. Easy. Next, a little bit harder. A VLOOKUP table is a common thing to use when we need to look up things from a table when there is a scenario like this. So there might be a rating from one to 10 if I want to, not sort of codify, but if I wanted to categorize these so I could graph them and make the graph make more sense, then I could use a VLOOKUP table. This is how it's going to work, VLOOKUP. This is just my table, that was my little heading. I'm going to put insert a row, or a, sorry, a column next to here because here I want to put in a word that associates with that rating automatically. So in my VLOOKUP table it's going to be maybe four things. So rating from this, remember the rating is going from 1 to 10 so I'm going to go 0, my max will be 10, this will be 3 to 7. So anything between 0 and 3 or 0, zero 1 and 2 is going to be garbage. From 3 to 7 is going to be average. From 7 to 10 is going to be good. And anything above is going to be amazing or awesome. So I want to put these in here automatically based on that number. And the way we do that is we use a VLOOKUP function. So the way we do it is we go equals VLOOKUP open bracket, the lookup value is this value, the value that we want to look up, the table, so comma, the table array is going to be the VLOOKUP table that we've just created, 
the column index, so comma, the column index means what column from the VLOOKUP table do we want to output here next to this lookup value? And that's going to be this uh, column two. So we put a two in there. And then we end with the closing bracket and push enter. So awesome. 10 is an awesome. Now, of course, I could have done that just by putting it there and typing in it. But again, if we have records that go for hundreds of rows long, then it's going to be a pain in the ass. So this is much easier, much more efficient. Now, here's where we have an issue when we're filling down the formula because I don't want to write that formula again. I can just copy this formula down into all these cells. But we have some NAs here because when we copy down, remember, it moves all the locations of the cells that we've put in our formula. So if I click here, you can see it's moved down. It's thinking that what's looking for the lookup table down here because we moved down one, two, three, four, five, six cells when we when we drag that down. And from here it's gone one, two, three, four, five, six cells, and it's gone down to here. So to make that VLOOKUP table static and not move when we drag this down, we're just going to make an edit. We've got to put a dollar sign in front of the column and the row. So this is saying don't move or make this C22, so that's C, This you can't see it, but this is A, B, C, C22, static, between C22 and D25, so this is column D, and this is 25, so this area here, don't move when I move this down. If I click and now fill down, those values won't move. So those values will always be here, or that range will always be there because I've set the address for those cells or this range static using those dollar signs. So remember the dollar sign in front of the column, the column and the row if you don't want them to be moved when filling. Now, as you can see, it's done it automatically. We can see all these ratings here. Now, the next thing is we are going to do a similar thing with what we did with the Apple versus Samsung, but this is going to be a little bit easier. So I want to count how many times garbage came up. I'm going to go equals, count if, the range. I'm going to then, the criteria is simply going to be this cell and enter. So garbage came up two times. I'm going to fill this down but before I fill it down I'm going to keep this range static. So when I fill down it doesn't move this range or look for it in cells down. Now filling down. Now here's some information or some data that we have processed that we can now turn into information insert. We could use a pi or a histo, but we'll just go with a pi. Because then we can see that average this is supposed to be awesome, this is supposed to be good, and average and garbage. So let's change the chart title to what was it? opinion on computing. Get rid of this, I can't see. And there we have some information. So that took a few more steps, but that's that's what we're learning about. This whole sack that's that will be our first sack will be all about you processing some data and turning it into something that we can use information, something that we can quickly look at and make a decision on. Because clearly here, um, the opinions of students are that computing is awesome and good. More awesome, 40%.
Now, some of you who made your surveys had some open-ended. What is open-ended? Well, what do you get when you get open-ended answers? You get qualitative data. How are we going to graph this stuff? They're all different answers. So if we went to graph that, it would make no sense. You would have a histogram with all just the same lines. So first of all, we, we need to codify this stuff and make a judgment on where, or basically give it a rating or a category, each answer. And then create another VLOOKUP table and basically repeat the steps that we just did for the rating here. So this is why collecting qualitative data is sometimes a pain because you have to do some extra things to be able to turn it into information. So let's give this, well, let's, let's create a VLOOKUP table first. We'll do just three things, so 0, 3 to 5. And the questions, or well, the question is, how often do you play games? So, never, sometimes, and all the time. So now let's give these all a rating from 0 to 5. Frequently, because it's fun, 5. Not that often, I hate games, 0. All the time, five. Usually an hour or so, but not heaps. So about a three. Occasionally, but usually study first. Two. Always gaming and in trouble, five. Too much time gaming, not enough study, five. I don't have games, I'm four, zero. Um, only if my friends are playing, otherwise never. So maybe a two. Constantly because my friends are always playing, five every night for at least four hours that's that's a lot five only sometimes maybe three during the weekend only maybe a three I play all the time even during class that's a five I hate games but I hate games that play regularly Ugh. four so now we need to put in a V lookup for those values here We've made our VLOOKUP table down here, so we're going to go equals VLOOKUP, the value, the comma, the table array, which is down here, the column, second column of that table array, and before I push enter, I know I'm going to have to fill down, so I'm going to make sure that that reference to that VLOOKUP table is static and won't move with I fill down. So this one is all the time, that's correct. Let's fill this down and see what happens. Never, never. Yes, yeah, so anything under a three was never. Anything between a three and a five was sometimes, so that's there, sometimes, sometimes. And if it was a five, it was all the time. So they all look pretty good. Now we can, well we can't graph yet, because now we're gonna do a count if equals account if, the same way we did this one. So the range is going to be here. The criteria is going to be this, and I'm going to set these cells static as well. We have four nevers. We have five sometimes and six all the time. Now we can graph this. Let's graph this as a Bar. And there we have it. We have some information that we have created via processing this data. This is the raw data. This is all the processing that we did using these functions. And here's our information that we've got out of it.